This is how I achieved basic procedural animation in Godot 4. Start by creating a basic leg mesh in your favourite freed modeling program. I'm using Blender, set up the, the armature, just something basic, make sure the weight's right, and then export it into Godot. Once the model's been imported, right click on it and create a new inherited scene, and then save that so we can start working on our inverse kinematics. So the next thing that we need to do is to set up two extra nodes. The first node we'll set up will represent the tip of the inverse kinematic chain and the other node will represent the target for the chain to try and point towards. So to create our tip node, we're first going to want to create a child node of Skeleton 3D. This node will be of type Bone Attachment 3D. Once you've added that, we need to set the bone index to be the final bone in our IK chain. Then we need to create a child node of that, which could just be a basic node 3D. And you're going to want to position that to be at the tip of the IK chain. And that will be our tip node. Our target node is just going to be a basic node 3D. I'm just going to add a mesh renderer to it so that we can see a bit easier where it is. Now we're ready to set up our inverse kinematic chain. To create an inverse kinematic chain in Godot 4, start by selecting your skeleton 3D. Create a new modification stack. Make sure it's enabled and in the drop down for modifications, add a new modification. Godot 4 has three different IK algorithms. You've got CCDIK, Fabric and Two Bone. I'm going to show you how to set up CCDIK and Fabric. Let's start by showing you how to set up the Fabric IK chain. This is the simplest one to set up and I feel like it creates the most natural results, but there is a downside that I'll cover later. So start by adding the chain length, which will be um, one for every bone in your IK chain. So in this case, three. Then set up the joint data. You're going to want to start by going from the root of your IK chain and then down to the end. So start with the top, then the next one, and then the last one. Finally, I find you get better results if you use tip node on the final one. So tick that and then drag in our tip node from earlier. And then finally, we just need to set the target. And there you go inverse kinematics. So as I said earlier, I feel like the fabric algorithm creates the most realistic looking results. The only problem is, unlike IK chain methods that I'm used to in the past, you can't set a pole node that you want the joints to point towards. Instead you have these magnet positions and it, it just doesn't seem to behave how I expect it to. It's probably my misunderstanding here. But if I try to say add a upward force on the middle joint, it seems like it works, but then you get weird behaviors where it just kind of snaps down. And for, for our purposes, we want to set up a spider-like appendage. So we're going to want it to kind of stay upwards in an arc. And I'm just having trouble keeping consistent results with that in here. So for our purposes, we're going to use the CCDIK modification instead. Just quickly before moving on to CCDIK, let me show you how you can add a default pose to the bone. So if you click your skeleton 3D, you can then hit this little bone edit mode button here on the tab. You can then select each bone and just rotate them into your desired pose. Perfect. Setting up CCDIK is only a little bit different than before. Add the modification and then start by assigning the tip node and the target node. Then we're going to want to add our joint data. So one of the limitations of CCDIK is that each joint can only rotate on a single axis, but we can get around this by adding the same joint multiple times on different axes. So even though we only have three bones, we're going to add four to our chain. And then our root joint, we're going to want to rotate on the Y axis and the Z axis. So we'll start with the Y, then put in the same bone again. And add on the Z. Then our final two bones we're going to add on the Z axis alone. Now 
and there we go our chain can rotate on the z-axis as you can see here and then the first one can also rotate on the y-axis while ccdik doesn't create as natural results as fabric you do have the added benefit of adding in these constraints to the joint we don't need those for what we're going to do today though now that we have the inverse kinematics working we're now ready to start working on our procedural animation the first step that we need to do is we need to make sure that the inverse kinematic target doesn't move with the rest of the body that the leg is attached to. There's two ways we can achieve this. The simplest method is to just make sure the target is in a completely separate hierarchy to the entity that we're creating. The other method is to, in our leg, add a blank node and repair the target to the node. That way, whenever the leg transform gets updated, the target remains still. Now we just need to create a stepping animation for our IK target. But before we can do that, we need to know the position of where we're going to try and step towards. To do that, we can just create a simple step target and have that parented either to the leg or to the body of the entity we're going to create and move that a certain distance across the body. Then what we can do is as the entity is moving forwards, we can keep checking the distance between the IK target and the step target. Once a certain threshold has been reached, we can just animate the IK target going up and then down towards the step target, and then the body can continue moving. Every time that happens, it'll just create a step. To achieve this, we're just going to add a script to our target IK node. Here's a basic script we'll be using to create our step. So we're going to start by creating a reference to the step target node so we can calculate the distance. And then we're going to want to set up a exported float so we can set the threshold for our step. Then in the process function, we want to calculate the global distance between our IK target node and our step target node. Then if the distance is greater than our threshold, we want to trigger our step. For the implementation of the step function, we're going to use the tween functionality in Godot 4. So we're going to start by creating a tween and setting the transition to linear and the ease to ease out just to make it a little bit more natural looking. We're then going to set parallel to true. What this does is that each subsequent tween that we set up will run simultaneously. So here we're going to move to the our global position to the X and Z locations of the step target. And then we're also going to want to lift our Y up to the ending step target plus a little extra. We then set parallel to false so that once the Y position tween has finished, it will then start moving our Y position back down to our step target. Finally, I've added tool at the top of the script so that the script will run while in the editor and I can demonstrate what it's doing. Now we can test our script within the editor. Start by reloading the scene just to make sure the script will run. Then we can just grab our leg transform and move it along and see if the step works. You can also take the opportunity to tweak your settings and tweens if you don't like how it looks. Here's how it looks like in the third dimension. Now to make sure our leg is always stepping on the ground, we want to add a ray cast to our step target looking down at the ground and if it detects a hit, move the step target to the hit location. Here's what that script looks like. We just get a reference to the ray and then if the ray is colliding with anything, we set the global position Y to be that of the hit position. Now you just need to create a scene for your entity and arrange the legs appropriately. When you start to add multiples of your legs to your entity scene, you'll find that when you start to move one, they both move. To fix this, right click your legs, make sure you tick edible as children. And then in the skeleton, make sure your modification stack is made unique. That way they stop affecting each other. 
Once you're done placing your legs on the body, play about with the starting positions and the step targets until you get an effect that you like. Once you're happy, you should have an entity that will step realistically across different obstacles. The problem is, it will look a little bit static as it does so. This is because we're not currently moving the body at all while the legs move and it makes it look a little unrealistic. Let's start by fixing the body's height. Attach a script to your entity and add a few variables to the top. We're going to want to have a reference to each leg and we're going to want to keep track of which position it is because that will be important for later. We should also add a height offset that we can set in the editor. Now we're going to calculate the average height of each leg. We do that by just taking the global position dot y of each leg and dividing it by how many legs we have and storing that in a variable. Then to make the movement less choppy we're going to use linear interpolation to slowly bring the body's height up to the average position that we've calculated plus our offset that we declared earlier. It'll already begin to look better because the body's going to slowly start bobbing up and down with its leg movement a bit more naturally and also it will get higher as it walks over taller objects. Now let's handle the entity's z rotation. Luckily this is very simple in Godot. Let's start by getting the average left and right leg position similar to how we did before. We're then going to utilize the angle to point method on the vector2 class to calculate the angle between our left leg and our right leg. This returns radians which is also the same unit of measurement that the global rotation uses. So we'll just interpolate to our new target rotation based on a certain speed. This is already looking significantly better than before. Now we just need to handle the entity's X rotation. Luckily this is achieved exactly the same as before except we take the average back and forward leg positions and in our vector 2 we use the Z position instead of the X position to calculate our angle. Be sure to minus out the resulting difference in this otherwise it will rotate in the wrong direction. And this is the finished procedural animation. There's a few things you could do on your own to improve the effect. One thing would be to make sure that a leg can only take a step when its opposing leg is grounded. Another thing that I think would be really good is to move the step target based on the current velocity of the entity. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you've got any suggestions on any topics you'd like to see covered in Godot 4, please drop it down in the comment section below and I'll try and get around to it. If you found this video useful, please drop a subscribe and it'd be really helpful. And yeah, see you in the next video. Cheers.